Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 298 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. Uh, and uh, look, huge announcement. Week, week since, uh, weeks since last missed episode, we're back to zero. I'm very fucking ill. Hopefully, next week we can get that to one. Oh my God. I just was, I, I, we were going to record last week and I text you. Uh, and then I went to sleep and I woke up at 4 p.m. Um, so we didn't do it then, but we're here now. And breaking news, uh, Keelan, I don't know if you've seen this story, but it's I reckon it's one of my favourite stories of the year. Uh, I'm going to play it for us now. A Sydney man accused of catching and cooking an ibis has been freed on bail under strict conditions. A magistrate telling the Vietnamese national the wait, ibis often wait for the a interview. chicken is protected and not for eating. Where others see an ugly menace, Tom Quash saw a tasty meal. How many bin chickens did you kill? One. Only one? Yeah. Why did you kill it? I ate it. <laughs> <laughs> I love just the... This is the... the like, classic, like, Vietnamese as fuck of like, what do you mean? I saw it. I killed it. What do you mean? Of course I was going to eat it. Like, this is maybe the most Vietnamese videos I've ever seen in my life of, like, <laughs> try eat it. <laughs> like, what the fuck else do you think I was going to do? Fuck it? Like, one of you white people? No. I'm hungry. I'm, I saw lunch. I'm, I'm cooking it. Try eat it. The 60-year-old was arrested yesterday after officers allegedly found a dead ibis in his Malabar unit. Neighbours raising the alarm after hearing the bin chicken in distress. Oh. Did it taste any good? I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. Oh. <laughs> So, he goes, I haven't tried it yet, so it's still sitting there in the kitchen. Oh. He's going, let me defeather it first, take his guts out, and I'll let you know. How did he kill it for it to make that much noise? Well, there's video. Oh. <laughs> now, how are you going to cook it? I just boil it up with fish sauce, something like that. It's not the first time he's accused of killing an ibis. He was also charged in March after this incident in Eastwood, where locals intervened. The bird later found dead. Oh. Today, Quash was granted bail on the condition he leave ibis and all birds alone. Another submission that counted in... <laughs> He's just vaping as he walks away from the courthouse. <laughs> He's just walking around like vaping going, fuck a white people? Why can't I can't eat bin chicken? <laughs> With fish sauce? Bro, the amount of macro plastics you would ingest by eating one of those. <laughs> like if you want if you want to know what the bin chicken tastes like, go and lick a bin and you'll find out. Like pour fish sauce on the onto the lid of a fucking bin and lick that. That's what it would have tasted like. Oh. I think that's I think that's great. I think that that uh that's like a really great use for bin chickens mm. is just Cooking them, like killing them by hand in front of kids at a park. You know, bare, in that video, I don't know if you, if you noticed, bare hands. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he obviously just walked up and he doesn't look very quick, but neither are bin chickens. They're very trusting of humans. Uh, and he looks like he just walked up and grabbed it by the neck and started going, nah, nah, and then a bunch of young families were like, stop, don't, because why? I'm hungry. I got fish sauce at home. I'm uh, hungry. That's uh, that's so good, and just like the the complete lack of remorse from him mm. uh, in the interview, and just not also not ashamed as well, which I I really love. Like that's what a difference in culture. He's like, oh, so you tried to kill a national treasure? Yeah, man. Reminds me of uh, I don't know if you get these TikToks on your feed, but I I constantly get videos of like like Chinese people who live on farms in China <laughs> just like cooking rare and ex exotic animals. No. <laughs> I saw this this video of this um of this cute little Chinese boy. Maybe he was like 5 years old, like a little toddler, and he's he's got this beautiful big pet tortoise and he's oh. like cleaning it uh, with a brush and I'm like, "Oh, what a what a beautiful video of a boy and his pet tortoise." Anyway, the tortoise was dead and he starts ripping his fucking scales oh. off his shell uh, and then they cook it and eat it. And uh, and and I, I imagine it went well with fish sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome back to the show. Uh, you may have noticed uh, if you're watching the video version, you're welcome. I'm I'm absolutely fucking styling on all of you. What do you think of the new the new uh, matching pink on pink Nike tracksuit? I really like it. You like that? It Really suits you. Yeah, I I I think pink's my color. I reckon yeah. I'm going to move away from black and just go all pink. You forever. wear pink a fair bit. I you? do. 
I do because it's uh, it's the most opposite of black. It's either I'm I'm wearing black or I'm wearing pink. Do you wear it in public? Uh, I haven't. I only just got it a couple oh. of days ago. But I will leave the house in this. I will. I like it. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not afraid. And uh, and and I just wanted something comfortable for the house because it's getting cold here in Australia. And I thought, well, why would I get another black fucking outfit if I'm just going to be at home? I'm going to wear pink. Uh, and then and then my dog touched me once, and there's a giant disgusting black stain. Mm. And I went, well, that's why. Just that's why you shouldn't wear pink. Pink socks. Yeah, well, I, I looked for pink socks. I found them. I'm going to get them. Uh, they don't sell a pink hat. They sell it for. They sell pink hats for 12 year old girls. Nike mm-hmm. does. Um, and I'm and I'm I'm hunting for pink shoes as well. So if anyone finds a, a hot pink Nike cap, send it my way. Bring it to a show. I want to I want to go all out with this. Mm. You should rather th- you know that the <laughs> medallion you have and you have yeah. that gold plated one. Yeah, you get it gold plated, but then dye the gold pink. I could get like a or, or pink enamel. Mm. Could do that. Or get like a pink rubber version made. I actually really like this new look. It's cool. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's just the matching fucking pink tracksuit. Yeah. I'm an ally. Yeah. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> um, speaking of allies, I did a charity gig. Mm. Oh, the- You're not going to clap? Oh, so- <laughs> You're not going to... Do you understand that, that I did a charity? Why do you think I did it? To fucking help the animals? <laughs> no. I did it so that I can tell people I did a charity gig and people go, bless your soul. Yeah. You're such a good person. Good man. Yeah, I am. Who and did, who was it for? It was for the shelter that scammed me and, and gave me my dog and said that it was a staffy and then it grew up one day and I looked at it and it was a pit bull. So it was <laughs> it was it was for Scar. Um I can't remember what it's what it's it's something something animal rescue. Second chance animal rescue. Great shelter. Um but uh but but also full of liars. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm very happy with the dog. They said it would be an American Staffy, which is a lot bigger than a Staffy, but not as big as what we have. I think she's a Great Dane. Whoever, whatever she is, her mother was a whore. Um, that because it's it's she's just like a mix of things. But that's what you get. She's a beautiful dog. Adopt, don't shop. Uh, and I got to do my first ever charity gig. I've never done one of those before. I was headlining, and. Uh, like I think we discussed it on the podcast before I did it, yep. that I was like, oh, I'm, I'm excited to do all of my animal material. And then you and I both realized at the same time that all of my animal material is trashing shelters and talking about getting ripped off and getting catfished by the pound. And uh, then I felt really nervous about doing it because you said, oh, you can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, then, and then I ended up doing it and they fucking loved it. That's good. <laughs> I was really nervous for you. I ended up going really well because like all of the material is just complaining about adopting animals <laughs> and talking about getting ripped off. And I, I ended up riff, riffing on this bit of like how much better it is to, to buy an animal. <laughs> but, but don't ever fucking tell anyone that. Like we have to keep the lie going that it's better to adopt. <laughs> oh, that's right. And they actually love that. That's very good. It's not better, but it's simpler. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, so. Did you so, film it? No, I didn't film it. Um, cause it was, it was just me. I couldn't be bothered. Um, and, uh, I was the headline act and it was at a bar and there was only one, there was one opening act and, uh, uh, drag queen. Um, and they were so funny. They were so fucking like really, really, really funny. I've never gone to a drag queen show. I think I've seen them like perform at like government, uh, council events or something. <laughs> and, um, which is just kind of like the council going, look how much we don't hate gays. Mm. You know, how could we hate gays if we would let a dude dress up as a woman and put fake tits on and, and sing about having gay sex? That's how much we, we're not scared of gay sex. That's what that is. Instead of going, well, we actually have um, gay employees. They won't have those. But they'll go, look at this guy in the fucking dress. Um, so we had the, the drag queen and, and he was performing. He was very funny. Um, and he, ha- he sung a bunch of songs. He, he did mostly parody songs and fuck, he could sing. He did one song where he, he changed the lyrics from it to being about a love song to it being about, um, fisting oh. and it was three minutes on fisting, yep. which was, uh, disgusting and fu- and really funny. And then he did another song about how one of his, um, hookups wanted to him to piss on him. And he didn't want to do that. And and he was saying, I would do anything for love. 
but I won't piss on you. <laughs> like that was pretty funny. pretty funny. And then he did a, another one about um, anal sex. Yep. So really, really graphic. And I got to talk to him afterwards and, and, uh, and, and all of his songs were about sex and fisting and anal and piss and shit and calm and dicks uh, and all of that. And then I talked to him afterwards. I go, oh, do you perform a lot? And he goes, yeah, I've, I've, got, uh, I've got another. I'm really busy at the moment. I've got another gig tomorrow. And I said, oh, what are you doing tomorrow? And he said, oh, I'm reading to children at the library. <laughs> Now, I was Actually, literally, uh, <laughs> <laughs> literally, and I and I was and uh, and we were bonding because I just got protested and he was going to get protested. Oh. So we were talking about getting protested. His protest is much scarier. Yeah, right. But it. But before I performed with him, I was like, well, I don't really see the problem with drag queens reading to children as long as they have a working with children check and as long as it's a kid friendly show. It's I mean, I don't, I don't see the, I don't see the necessity for it, but I also don't see the the reason why we should never do it. So I'm like, well, I don't care. Mm. Um, but then I watched the guy just sing for forty minutes about fisting and shitting and pissing and coming, and then I thought, well, maybe it shouldn't be you. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like that would be like getting me to read to the kids at the library. You you wouldn't want that because <laughs> most of the time I'm going. Ah, cunt, fuck, shit, dick, and telling stories about women fucking dogs. Like that's what I did on my last podcast. Was I told I read an email about a woman who fucks dogs? If I then was like reading spot to children at the library, <laughs> you'd be like, oh no, I think comedians should be allowed to read to children, but should it be that one? <laughs> you know, I just feel like it's like, are we gonna get fucking Riley Reid to read to children? Because She's not doing sexy stuff for the kids, but then mm. I don't know. I think that that all I'm saying is it doesn't help their cause. The drag queens who want to read to kids, if you also on the weekend and dress up as Satan and talk about fisting, it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence that you're also able to do a kid friendly show. And I'm sure he was lovely, and I'm sure that he was, but it just made me go, oh, I get it a little bit. <laughs> Keelan's being silent during this bit. <laughs> Look, he was funny. I would I would see him with my adult children <laughs> to sing about fisting. Mm. But uh but but if 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 it was someone to read to my children, I would want the drag queen that's like just for, for kids. Apparently Frankston Library got protested or threatened for protesting because yeah. there was the same thing, the drag people You know what I reckon it is? I reckon it's a bunch of fucking librarians who are bored at work. <laughs> Going, oh, let's 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 do something exciting. Mm. Let's fucking rile up the Nazis. That'll be funny. Calling a fake bomb threat. That's what I. If I worked in a library, I would be going, "Who am I going to book? I'm going to book the drag queen, and I and I want to book the drag queen who has videos of them singing about fisting. <laughs> and I'm gonna and I'm gonna I'm gonna book the fucking um, child sex therapist as well to talk about uh, sex education. Then I'm gonna book it like just whoever is gonna. Cause the most noise because work in a library. You work there for five years. It's peaceful. Year six, you're like, "Fuck, let's get a riot going." <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do. You know, like what's gonna what's gonna piss off the alt right Nazis? Let's get them into headline. Um, you know, like I I won't be surprised if I get booked to do some some jokes about the Dalai Lama at the Frankston Library next, just by from some librarian who's a bit sick of all the quiet. Did you see the big? Dalai Lama thing at Fed Square last week. Yeah, I walked past it before my show and laughed. Um, I don't think it was because there's different types of Buddhists. It's like uh, how Catholics have the Pope, but Christians don't. I think it was for the more common Buddhists. I don't think it was for Tibetan Dalai Lama Buddhism, I think. Uh, but I don't properly know. I didn't see any. I, you know what? I didn't want to go and investigate. <laughs> I didn't want to get surrounded. Um but uh, yeah, uh, ultimately, you know, all jokes aside, the drag queen library thing, I don't, mm. I don't care. If they're ever working with children's check, they are as dangerous as a fucking priest, which is hopefully not at all. But you know what I mean? Like it's, mm. I, I, I also, I also think that what is really funny is that you don't see any of these protesters outside the Catholic Church when they fuck up. Mm. You don't see it. 
So it's like all these people going, oh, we care about kids. It's like, yeah, but you, you kind of only care about kids if you can also multitask and yeah. yell at a queer. <laughs> like, like, that's like, oh, I love my kids and I hate gays. And I can combine those two activities. That's what it is. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's just funny. I felt sorry for the guy talking about his protesters because, like, he was a... Uh, he had to do a costume change, right? He, he literally had to swap out his fake ass because he'd lost weight recently. <laughs> so I went uh, to the bathroom and and he's just uh, changing while on a Zoom call with four other drag queens. And uh, and I walk into the bathroom and they all look at me through the Zoom call and I, I felt like... I was, I was... I felt like I was getting mean girls. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> and uh, and then I go, what... What, what the fuck were you talking about? Like, what was so urgent that you needed to have, like, the, the fucking Mount Rushmore of drag queens on a Zoom <laughs> meeting? And he goes, oh, we're just getting protested tomorrow, so we're kind of planning security. I'm like, oh, oh I relate. Yeah, it sounds, sounds... His ones are much scarier than my ones. Um, but, yeah. There's a really funny TikTok I meant to send it to you last night, which mm. is similar in, to the point <laughs> that you were just talking about. I can't find it now. Oh, great. Oh, great. So, sorry. Excellent. You I know what? That's right. Would you want to? Would it be of value to the listener if you explain the gist of it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, okay. It yeah. was. Um, it was like a guy at a pro-Trump rally. Yeah. Interviewing uh, people there who were yeah. supporting Trump, and asking like, "What do you think of gender reassignment surgery?" Yeah. And the guy was like, "As long as I'm not paying for it, I don't care." Yeah. And the guy kept asking him questions, and he had like the right idea, but got it all mixed up with the propaganda from yeah. the far right. So mm. he's like saying things and he's like, anyone can do whatever they want, but I don't fucking make me pay for it. Yeah. I don't want to fucking know about it, but do whatever you want. Yes. But I don't want to pay for it. It is very it is very funny of like, oh, freedom for everything, but but not that. Yeah. It's the same, same as the fucking Buddhist thing of like, oh, you know, you have to respect our beliefs. So you're not allowed to criticize our guy or we'll cancel your show. It's like, that's not how that works. I can respect your beliefs by not interrupting it and not ruining it for you. The same way you can respect mine, my right to perform my jokes without interrupting it. You know, we don't have to agree with each other. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I just thought it was very funny that a guy singing about fisting was then going to be like, all right, what kids book should I read? Is that his show for the kids as well? Uh, singing about fisting, I I don't know. You know that that would a hundred percent happen to me. Where if I had a kid friendly show, I would just start doing like fucking gay Hitler or something, and just by accident, and and I would go, well, I've started it, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to finish it. Or if I was a drag queen, I would take in the wrong CD player. <laughs> You know, like, I think I'm going to start playing the fucking play school theme song and then ABBA starts going. I'm like, well, I'm going to have to start singing my ABBA song about dicks. <laughs> I don't have anything else. Have you seen, off topic, but very funny, mm. the episode of Malcolm in the Middle where they they yeah. bring in a, one of their friends, like a girl who starts living with them. Mm. And she convinces both the brothers that the other one is gay. And because the brothers want to be supportive to the other, they start accepting gay things into the house. That's both funny. Thinking the other one is gay, so yeah. they end up going to the ABBA musical. Um, to that's know. a that's a funny concept. Yeah, they both start wearing pink tracksuits. Pretty much, that's good. Um, we got an article here that you sent me, yeah, Keelan. Very funny. Um, the headline is: Why are so many young Americans adopting fake British accents? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Whether deflecting an awkward moment or lightening the mood in an argument, affecting an accent has become a Gen Z verbal tick. Um, <laughs> are you coming to terms with we're no longer... I'm a little bit upset that we're not getting hate from the media all the time anymore. Remember, remember the, when this used to be us? Every article was like, oh, millennials are doing this. Yeah. And it sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But yeah. this article was probably written by a fucking millennial. Yeah. You know, just shitting on Gen Z after growing up with old people, <laughs> boomers and Gen Xs going, oh, those fucking millennials and their avocado toast. Mm. And now millennials are just bullying Gen Z, thinking like, like we're not just repeating the exact same lame shit that we saw. And we're like, oh, you old people. Mm. I feel like a lot of millennials are like... <clears throat> A lot of millennials are like, oh, Gen Z sucks and Gen Z's not cool. But like, I can say that because I'm cool and I'm young. Yeah. 
When really, like, when fucking Gen X and Boomers were saying that to us, we would just look at them and go, you, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> See, this take that I have right now is a really cool millennial take that Gen Z would love because I'm, I'm a cool millennial. Well, I, I technically am a Gen Z, but I identify as a millennial. You are a Gen Z? Yeah. Wow. I was born in 2000. Fuck, how embarrassing. Get him off the show. <laughs> Kyra Green lives with anxiety. Oh, Gen Z. And when, <laughs> when she misplaced her... See, that was... See, it's hard not to. It's you have to resist. Like when you're the old, when you start to get a little bit older, it's hard not to look at the young people and go, "Oh, shush," you know. But you have to resist that because then you become a fucking old crotchety <laughs> boomer loser. Which you know, I think I have been in spirit since I was eighteen years old. <laughs> you know, that has been the spirit of the show. So it's not like I've changed. <laughs> You know, I've always been going, oh, this fucking sucks. It's just I've been yelling that since I was 19 <laughs> instead of fucking 29. Um, but uh, you know what it is? It's uh, it, you You really have it. Seeing a, a Gen Z person doing something when you're a millennial, um, it's like when you see a year seven <laughs> and you're in year 12 yeah. and, you, and, and you remember how the year 12s treated you when you were in year seven yep. and you vowed. Like I vowed to myself, like I would never, I would never treat a year seven like that. But then I became a year twelve, mm. and I knew that those little fucks deserved it. Book drop, <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what that is. So Kyra Green lives with anxiety, and when she misplaced her boarding pass at the airport gate just before her flight was due to leave, the twenty-six-year-old nerves started acting up. Okay, you're twenty-six. All right. You're way too old to be putting on fake British accents at the airport. You should be institutionalized. <laughs> As she looked around for it, the native New Yorker began speaking in a British accent. I was throwing shit all I was I was throwing shit all over the place. And I was like, no, I cannot do this. This is terrible, Green said, with the posh inflection of someone who went to a British boarding school. I was literally scrounging through the trash looking for my boarding pass, but that voice added a little bit of confidence and pizzazz when I didn't feel it internally. Yeah, that yeah, she's uh she's she's probably going to kill someone. Uh, Americans have long been called out for their phony British accents. Think Madonna in her Guy Ritchie era. I can't. I, I don't remember that. <laughs> uh, or the friend who just came home from studying abroad in London. But Gen Z has embraced bad imitations of Cockney slang or Yorkshire dialect, using <laughs> obviously fake theatrical voices to make light of low-grade daily dramas. <laughs> You know what that that uh, that person who comes back from a trip is is very relatable. I feel like everyone has that friend who they went to some place for fucking two weeks, mm. and you. But you know what? I went to New York for two weeks, and I and I almost started saying bet, and then I heard myself say it once, and I was like, foul. Yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah, bet, bet. I become a member of the Outer Banks when I go visit my friends in America. The Outer Banks? It's a, oh, it's a really popular TV show. From where? From North Carolina. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. Someone listening just went, oh, I get that. It's so much <laughs> It's so much cooler to, to wherever you go just to fucking ham up your yeah, accent yeah. and your culture. Like when I was in New York and LA, I was being Australian as fuck. I was throwing cunt out there at nice dinners, mm. you know, and just shocking women it was it was awesome, and you would just speak to someone, tell them lies about kangaroos, just really hamming up. Like, yeah, I've got snakes. Uh, mm. We we've become immune to sunburn and skin cancer because the sun's so hot. Just saying shit like that. Like, I bet Mister Mister Quan, that Vietnamese guy, d didn't even want to eat a bin chicken. He was just hamming up the Vietnamese shit. <laughs> you know, like I bet I bet if you spoke to him in Vietnam, he'd be like, "No, I don't want to eat a bin chicken. I was just trying to freak out the Australians. I just thought it would be funny." <laughs> You know, they, they they think now they think we eat bin chickens. <laughs> He's just fucking turning. I don't even vape. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Um, the accent really took over when I started watching the show. She's talking about how she used to watch Love Island. Um, it blew the accent the fuck up and everyone was obsessed with their cute little sayings like doing bits. Uh, for the uninitiated, that means getting intimate but not having sex. Oh, they're doing bits. Is that what that means? I thought doing bits was like when I talked to Alex, my English friend. That means like, oh, I'm that uh, it's doing really well. Like, how's your new video going? He's going, oh man, it's doing bits. Oh, but I don't know. Uh, I don't think Love Island um, is a reality show about uploading YouTube videos, though. So <laughs> maybe we're both correct. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, and it just goes on to... Okay, here we go. Then there's H2O, Just Add Water, an Australian teen drama about girls who turn into mermaids whenever they swim or bathe. Old clips of the show often go viral on TikTok. The actors have Australian accents, but Lieberman said those were harder to do than a British voice. So he launches into a cheesy Essex dialogue when he says he feels knackered, as his character might say. Yeah, I think um, I think that might just be autism. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's a paragraph about like a housemate's... Oh, about housemates? Okay. All right. Uh, where are we going? Okay. This is a long, a huge article. Did ChatGPT write this shit? Um, you're going to have to find that paragraph for me. Yeah. I'm going to move on. Uh, <clears throat> so I did my uh, my charity gig. What else has been happening? The uh, Oh, the iDubs thing has uh, kind of blown up. I, I thought I would... I, I was going to weigh in, in last week, but I was too sick. Um, the the iDubbbz drama has kind of blown up. He's... he's uh, If you're not up to date with it, iDubbbz is like the guy that did all those content cops where he... Uh, imagine Lou Review, but like way more successful. Um, <laughs> he uh, basically would just like take down... Do really like... like um, uh, Just fucking surgeon like takedowns oh you found the article okay we're gonna read this then we'll move on uh he also uses the voice as a conflict management tactic oh my god i asked my roommate can you please take out the rubbish leave him and explain sounding like an east enders guest star it's me being playful it's the british part of me asking for something that needs to be done not the real me dude covid really fucked people up huh <laughs> Like, if, if the only way you can ask someone to do the chore they've agreed to do in your share house is by putting on an accent. So you couldn't do that with other accents, could you? Mm. Like, I couldn't, like, if we lived together, I couldn't walk up to you and be like, Can you please take out the rubbish? <laughs> can you please take out the rubbish, Akiran? <laughs> like, you can't do that. That's, that's not on. You can only do an English accent mm. if you start doing, like, a really racist Asian accent. That's not on. <laughs> You would get evicted. Uh, what's for dinner? Bin chicken. Uh, <laughs> Bing chilling. Brinton Parker, a 30-year-old who lives in the Bay Area, works in tech marketing. The deluge of bad news out of Silicon Valley has her feeling like she's approaching burnout, and she has recently asked her manager for support at work. <laughs> so, okay, so just like picture yourself. You work with this bitch for like seven years. She's American. You have You don't know her that well. But, you know, you know her and you you know, because you're her manager, you know her holiday time. She hasn't taken off any time recently to travel. And then one day she goes, I said, it's affecting me health, mental health, isn't it? <laughs> and my boss was like, why did you say it like that? <laughs> I think it adds levity, the vulnerable situation. <laughs> the tougher the conversation, the more cockney I become. I'm fucking losing my mind, isn't it? <laughs> That's, that was all that I... Yeah, you can't walk up to your boss and be, go, and be like, me going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. See, that's... um, That's fucking awesome. I, You know what, Keelan? I would like... Uh, I would like you to communicate with me like that from now on. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a British accent or an Asian accent. Just like every time, you know... Like, how about every time I feel too sick to do the podcast, uh, I'm just going to go, Hey, S.A., I'm a little bit too sleepy. <laughs> Is that a Mexican? I don't know. That sounded a bit Scottish. Yeah. 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 Well, the point, yeah, I'll just I'll just call you up and as Shrek. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the iDubs thing, uh, I thought I would give my take on it because uh, I actually created a, or kind of still do create like a very similar type of content to the stuff that he's like completely disavowed it seems he blew up doing content cops which is which were just like you know 10 15 minute like scalpel like takedowns of really popular people he did tana mojo he like kind of exposed her hypocrisy of using the n-word and he, he ended up going to a meet and greet and saying the slur in front of her next to her for a photo <clears throat> um, <clears throat> but uh, and he's now since apologized for that and said that it's wrong and he's taken down the video. Uh, he made fun of Leafy for for like you know Leafy basically bullied people, so I Dubs did the same thing to him. And he did Keemstar. He did a lot a lot of different people. 
and kind of really took them down. And this was at the peak of like when when YouTube commentary stuff, like you were allowed to be a lot more brutal and a lot more uh, uh, criticism e of other people. And, uh, you know, I did this with, with Lou Review pretty much at the same time. Um, <clears throat> I think I started a little bit, a uh, little bit earlier, but, but, uh, iDubs did it a lot better. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he's, he's come out with a video and I've, I've met Ian, uh, just once briefly when he was in Australia, I hung out with him for like a day with, with Max and Chad and a few others. And he, he was nice. Um, pretty similar to how he is on camera. Uh, he, he made this video and he, he disavowed like all of the content that all of the the content cops that he's made and has basically gone uh look it, it was bullying and the the amount of hate that i sent people's way was wrong and uh, especially like really 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 walked back his uh let's be honest uh frequent and excessive use of slurs you know he would do it in every video all the time in all of his unboxings and it was definitely done in, a, in an ironic way i don't think it was done with an intent to be racist uh and i look i've said fucking slurs in my videos before as well uh nowhere near to that frequency but i've said it in podcasts and stuff and my opinion on it has has changed as well of like i don't i don't think uh you have to say it i don't think that i don't think you have to say it and and i i think that you kind of shouldn't as well uh unless it's like unless you have like a I'm still like, unless you have like the, the fucking funniest, best joke that absolutely requires the use of the word, Louis CK has one where, where he's, uh, he, look up his joke about someone making his coffee about the, the only time he's ever thought the N word genuinely. <laughs> it's a, it's a good bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've kind of changed. I've, I've changed as well. I, I wouldn't do it, uh, today and, uh, um, I think that when I, I, I did it in one video and I like repeated someone, it was a video where, where this guy made this obviously fake video where he saved a racist man from killing himself and he goes to save this guy's life and stop him from killing himself and the guy who's going to kill himself, who's obviously an actor, calls him the N-word and then I reenacted it and pointed out how even the actor was very reluctant to say it, like that's how fake it was and I said it. And so I think that's fine, like that usage of it. Um, but I, I, yeah, I, I think, I guess I would agree with, with Idubs when he says it was probably wrong, but, but also when he did it with Tanner, like the context of, of, of how he used it was Tanner called him out for using slurs. And then he played like a bunch of clips of her using slurs, uh, the way they they were originally intended to be used, like as slurs, like she was using them as people and at uh people of other races whereas when he was using it it was he was just like saying it like it's you know it's not good but it, it is less bad uh so idubs doing that was like more to point out the hypocrisy of tanner i think going to her meet and greet and saying it like i think that's a problem especially because you know you like when you're an adult male you can't rock up to to fucking women's live events yeah, and and say shit that would scare them. Even if you're morally in the right, and if you're doing it to prove a point of like you shouldn't say slurs, it's like undeniably a weird thing for like a grown male to do. Um, but it was funny as well. Like I laughed. <laughs> like it made me laugh, and it, it got millions of views, and it entertained so many people. What I think, what I think that 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 Idubs is is correct in pivoting away from that stuff because I have also. You know, I moved away from from exclusively doing Lou Review because I kind of saw the future of it. Like, I, I started in 2012 doing all this type of stuff of, like, very criticism-heavy stuff. And it was definitely comedy, but it was very, like, trashing everybody. And uh, I found myself getting to a point where I was just trashing people to make a video and not because they had, like, actually done something worth, like, fucking 15 minutes of here's why you suck. Uh, even though it's it's supposed to be funny, and but also I was I was starting to foster this audience, and this is kind of when you came on board. You kind of saw the when we when we started to pivot away from like the mm. more heavy criticism and move towards like funny. Um, <clears throat> is uh, I started to pivot, and it's the similar what I, Ian said. Is I just started to uh, accrue a very large audience of people who fundamentally dislike success. Yeah. Like you, and and you can see 
like so many of these people who do like pretty much exclusively uh, criticism type stuff of like this why this this is why this person sucks and it's not really like it's criticism before before entertainment. Their audiences almost always 100% of the time end up turning on them because they go, oh, you're just like them. Like all the people that you trashed and all like you, you, cause you start off as the underdog taking on people much bigger than you. And then you build this giant audience. And then all of a sudden you are the person that you're making fun of. And the audience that you've garnered are people who dislike people like you. And they go, oh, you suck now. And that's that didn't really happen with me, but I saw the bubblings of it, especially because I ran out of shit to criticize. Yeah. Like uh, a a big reason why those videos were so successful, like my lure reviews and the content cops, and you know, fucking everyone was doing it. Like uh, I'm Alex was doing it. All the commentary YouTubers. It was a giant fucking genre. A huge reason why that genre was so popular was because. YouTube was like the Wild West. People doing fake shit everywhere. People were scamming people everywhere. People were doing like horrible, bad, exploitative content. And then commentators pointed all of this out and everyone's like, yes, finally someone's saying it. And then all these videos and all these YouTubers started to get fucking millions of views and, and, and giant audiences. And then the minute one person did something fucked, 30 channels with a million subscribers would trash you for it yeah. and it would hurt your career. And then all of the big YouTube channels and all the up and comers were like, oh, well, we can't do bad things anymore because the police will yell at us. And then there just wasn't enough fucking scam, horrible, awful content to sustain an economy of weekly commentary videos. Mm. So then you just started finding yourself going, oh, well, I guess I could make fun of this person for not being very funny. But that's mean <laughs> you know like it like that's and and it's not it doesn't warrant it and it's not as funny as as like you know when i did my video on keemstar and i i pointed out like all these horrible things that he's done uh i've done videos on like other fucking scam artists on like you know jake paul and stuff like that but you do it once maybe twice you're you're repeating yourself and it's boring and it sucks and you garner this audience that that doesn't like success and has such a high standard for you that if you fuck up once they turn on you and that's what's happened to idubs yeah and i think he's right in pivoting away from it but i do think he's gone wrong with the way that he's done it and 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 i like even me watching it you haven't watched it have you keelan no. it was very like you were wrong for enjoying it yeah. You know, it was very it was very like I feel bad for making it and you should feel bad for liking it. But like you're kind of you were like a late 20 year old dude making videos for 15 year olds. Like you know, you think about all the fucking horrible shit you used to watch when you were 15 that was like morally repre reprehensible and wrong, but you thought it was funny because you were an edgy 15 year old. Like it's not nest like it's not necessarily the fault of the fucking child. You know, it's the it's like that's kind. That's where I think where he's kind of messed up, and I, I like I, I like Ian, and I think he's doing the the right thing career wise and and shit. But I think that the way that he's done it is he's kind of alienating his himself even further from his audience by going. Not only was it wrong for me to make it, but you're wrong for liking it. And if you and it, it the, the, he didn't explicitly say this, but the tone of it really seemed to be like if you if you still like it, I don't like you. Um, which I think is just the wrong way to go to go about it. Um, and I think that the reason why he's getting such a negative backlash as well is because he kind of hasn't replaced the content. Like with, like he hasn't, he's gone, I hate this and I don't want to do it anymore, but he hasn't gone, but instead here's this, you know? Because that's, that's kind of what I did is when I started to not really like the commentary stuff as much, I was like, well, I, I actually much prefer the really funny parts of the commentary videos and then i and then i go and i want to be a stand-up comedian anyway like that's what i was trying to do the whole time so i was like well i'm just gonna go full ball into like just funny and instead of stopping and going oh if you like my lit reviews you're a fucking bad person which i don't think is true i i love those videos i think they're funny there's parts of them that maybe i wouldn't do but overall i'm like you know you're a fucking artist you grow and change and shit like that um, I was just like, well, here's my stand-up, here's my sketches, here's like videos that are still about people, but aren't like 
here's why this person sucks. Like I like when I make videos on people, I try to um, you know, poke at them and make fun of them a little bit, but in a in a much more like, ah, we're all having fun type way and don't worry, I'm just being silly. Like I don't actually care. Cause that's another huge thing, is fuck man, after like 10, 15 videos, like you don't you don't care anymore yeah. about what fucking Logan Paul is doing on YouTube mm. and and what the next Keemstar did and all these like fucking beefs and shit like that. Like it's it becomes fucking boring to look at and to watch and and, and it's hard to not repeat yourself because you're gonna be like, oh Logan Paul's doing another scam. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's Logan Paul. Um so I think that's my thoughts on 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 iDubs is I think that I think that he's he's kind of doing the right thing, but I think that he's he's the way that he's communicating it is is the wrong way, and I think that all, all, a, a big part of it as well is just people just hate the fact that he has a girlfriend with OnlyFans, mm. and uh, and and I don't I don't care at all. Like it, like if you you know I I wouldn't I wouldn't personally have a girlfriend who would do that, but if you would, I don't care. Mm. You know, like it's it's. It's like if if you if you would fucking you know you like getting pegged. It's like <laughs> I don't care. Like it doesn't it doesn't uh, or or if you if you like fucking listening to music, but I like reading. It's like it has nothing to do with me. And I think that all of these people going, oh, Anissa changed Ian. It's I don't think that's true at, at all. Like uh, um, there he's was not, a he's not in his early twenties anymore. Of course he's he's thirty two. Yeah, like it, of course he's fucking changed. Like I've changed so much since I started. I've changed at like an unbelievable amount. I've changed so much in the last fucking four years from like all of the shit that I've been through. Like I'm a completely different person that wants to make different things. Like I think that's super normal. I wouldn't come out and say like, oh, if you like the fucking porn mail song, you're a freak. You know, I wouldn't come out and go. Oh, if you if you like face beef, you're a fucking incel. Yeah. I would I wouldn't say that because I you know it's all it's all part of like I I did that shit. You know, I don't I'm not I'm not ashamed of it. I did it. I I, I had fun doing it, and and you know it's uh, if you liked it and you don't like what I'm doing now, that's okay. If you like what I'm doing now more, which most people do, that's awesome. Um, but one part of the video that I that I that really made me feel for him that I really disagreed with was he said that um, for a really long time, and I think I, I disagree with it. Like I'm sure he feels it, but I think it's wrong. Is he's, he was going, look, I, I don't have confidence in my ability to entertain people. Like I don't have confidence in my personality. Like I don't feel like my personality and who I am is like entertaining enough for people. Uh, and he goes, I've never really, but I, but that's bullshit. Like, I think that's so wrong. Like I think like, his personality is a huge fucking reason why he's blown up. I don't think you can hide your personality really in online content. I think people really like him. I think he's, I met him. I liked him. I thought like I met him personally when he wasn't performing and filming. And I thought he was like a really nice, mm. funny guy. Uh, so hearing that made me go, ah, oh, that's sad. That's wrong. Uh, you, you know, you don't want people to think that, especially someone who's so fucking successful. You think, well, well, if you didn't even fucking like it, then what? I like me. No <laughs> one's watching me. <laughs> Um, no, I think, uh, and I'm kind of talking in circles. I think that pivoting away from what he was doing is, is like totally the right thing to do. Cause another thing I've talked about this before, you cannot make those videos anymore. YouTube won't allow it. Like you can't, I think YouTube's even taken down some of his videos already. Like before he's done that, like filthy Frank was you couldn't do that now. Like you just couldn't. If he was the same guy and he started making the same videos in the same order, exactly the same shot for shot, and they'd never existed before, he would get his channel deleted. Like they would, or he would make it to a thousand people a week. He would like it would never be allowed to kind of blow up. Like that's another thing. You cannot like every single podcast I put up goes up demonetized because I can't help myself from saying cunt. <laughs> like when I do videos, I will I will never say that word because you can't even say it once. The video gets no ads on it. So I just don't say it in my videos. But when I'm speaking like with no script uh, as me, I've, I've just like given up on trying to censor myself like that. So these videos don't make money. And if this was my only income source, like the ads on this podcast, I couldn't do it. I would have to, I would have to change. And that's something that you just have to do. Like on, if you want to be a big YouTuber, you can't make that type of content 
anymore. The website won't allow it. And also, it's been done anyway. Mm. Like, we all did it. I did it. Fucking just about every YouTuber had their had their commentary phase, and it was fun, and it was great, and it, I thought I thought it was like one of the one of the more legendary periods of YouTube. Uh, but you know, I'm almost thirty. I'm twenty nine now. I don't want to be fucking making videos about the latest Matty B song that sucks. I don't care. I want to, I want to talk about Vietnamese dudes that try and that kill bin chickens with their bare hands and then eat them. And, and drag queens that sing about fisting and then perform for children. Like, that's much more mature entertainment for the intellectual. And that's what I'm about. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, I'm actually excited to see what, what Idubs does. And I think he's wrong when he says that his personality is not entertaining. I think it's good. Um, anyway, uh, let's see if I've got any, uh, any emails here. Um, Oh, little update on our cat, Keelan. Yeah. Missed out. He's gone. Oh. We rehomed him. Oh, good. Oh, you didn't know this? No. Yeah, we re- he's, he's, he, you didn't notice from the lack of screaming in the house <laughs> and crying and trying to get in the door and then trying to go out the door and, and, and how non-anxious the dog is. Have you noticed she's just sleeping? I did, yeah. Yeah. I did see... Well, when I walked in, I see all the animals. Yeah. So I, I see a bunch. So yeah. I'm just... I just it's a assumed. fucking zoo here. <laughs> yeah. No, we've we've rehomed him and it is so good. Uh, it's he, so awesome. He's stoked. Yeah, he's stoked. He's like a single cat household fella. Yeah, yeah. and we've put him with a with a with a friend who who uh, who actually wanted to take him. Oh, um, uh, <laughs> who hid the fact that he is pretty loose with consent uh, from <laughs> from their partner, so they had him. Um, oh, okay. And uh, yeah, it's he's doing really good. Uh, it's it's a good thing because you fu- you know I would I've I've always adopted animals my whole life, and it's never not worked out. This is the first time where like it was bad for him and bad for the other animals and bad for us, and but we, there was no way we we're going to send him back to a pound because a, a a black male cat they don't make it out of the pound they yeah. they die there. So uh, yeah, pretty stoked um, to put him in a good home. My girlfriend's family have two Burmese cats that they yeah. they ethically got, not yeah. not from a shop. They stole it from a breeder. Um, yeah, actually, I don't know if it is ethical, but anyway, they. Uh, well, Phoebe and I are currently looking after my sister's cat for yeah. a few days, mm-hmm. and we were telling Phoebe's mum about it and or Phoebe's parents about it, and Phoebe's dad goes, "Is it purebred?" And then I was like, uh, I don't know what it is. I don't think it's purebred. Yeah. And then I think I was talking about your dog. Yeah. Is it purebred? And then every time yeah. we have a conversation about animals, <laughs> he's always like, it's such is a, it purebred? Such an older person type thing of, it's like a dog's not worth anything unless it's like, but, but what does that even fucking mean? Purebred just means like inbred and they have fucking mm. nerve damage and their joints don't work and they're, they're, their brother was their cousin and their mother was their sister type shit. Yeah. Like, there's, they're not good. Like, uh, I've got a friend who has uh, Frenchies and they're the, the most ugly... Frenchies. Frenchie dogs. You've seen those, those French bulldogs? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I understand that when I say Frenchie and ugly, you think of our mate, but <laughs> I was actually talking about the dog. Um, and, uh, and man... <laughs> What they're they're all pure bed bred Frenchies, but they they all look so completely different because they're all fucking genetic freaks. Like one of them is just like I picked it up and it's a rib cage with legs. Oh. That's all. It has no neck. It's got no like hips. It's just rib cage and then stubby little legs and then it breathes like me when I'm asleep. <laughs> it's so it doesn't. Um, now I don't have any email questions here, but uh, before we get on to the Patreon episode, which, by the way, you should go and check out the Patreon episodes up right now. Um, L- launching a book club and a movie club. We are. I've got I've got the first book and I've got the first movie, and we're we're launching Discord channels, uh, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna read a book a month because uh, I know that some people are slower than others, and uh, we're gonna kind of do this as like a, a way to get back into reading because a lot of people. I've been talking about reading a lot. I've just gotten back into it. And a lot of people are like, oh man, I really want to start, but I don't know where. So I've got a, a great book that got me back into reading. Uh, and we're going to give everyone a month to kind of read it. And then we were thinking we were going to do a movie every two weeks yeah. uh, and and discuss those two things. So for people who aren't really big readers or people who, who fail to read the book in a month, we can do the movie. Um, <clears throat> so uh, Keelan, uh, do you have any gay mates? 
no. I don't think so. Bigot? I don't think I do. No gay mates? Not that I know of. You are a fucking bigot, okay? Does Rafi count? No. <laughs> I, I have my, I've got, I've had my, my first official gay mate experience. Oh, really? And it's, and it's made me feel like an ally. That's why I bought the pink tracksuit. I had my first gay mate experience. Not my first gay experience. <laughs> it's very different. I didn't have a gay experience with my gay mate. I had an experience where my gay mate had a gay experience and I was in the same room with them. And you know what? It made me feel like an ally. Oh. Because I feel like a lot of people, you know, they're, they're like, oh, there's nothing wrong with being gay, but they've never been around gay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't think like I every have. everyone ha- everyone knows a few gay people, but have you ever been around them while they're being gay? I don't think. No, I don't. no. obviously, I mean they're always being gay, <laughs> but I'm saying like, have you? His his. I'll paint the scene. Go to my friend's place, hanging out, mm-hmm. and meet a few different people. I know this person. I know that person. I'm, oh, there's a new person. G'day, mate. How are you going? Hey. Oh, who are you? And he goes, oh, I'm this. And I go, oh, nice to meet you, mate. Uh-huh. Right? That's fine. And then uh, and then I go, oh, so ha- who, who do you know? And, and they go, oh, I'm actually your mate's boyfriend. Oh. And I went, great. <laughs> and then I was like, was great the, was great. And then I was like, well, what do I say when I meet my mate's girlfriend? That I didn't, because I didn't know they were they're new, and I don't I don't think I've ever gone great. So that was too enthusiastic. But I've but also I've never had a gay mate experience before, so I didn't know how to how to how to do this. So they're like, oh, I'm actually I'm actually I'll just say oh, I'm actually Tom's boyfriend, and I went great, <laughs> <laughs> and I went fun. That was too much. But it was fine. They didn't notice. Oh, here's what I should have done. Oh, who are you? I'm Tom's boyfriend. Oh, cool, man. How'd you guys meet? <laughs> That's what I should have done. But instead I went, who are you? I'm Tom's boyfriend. Great. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, they definitely noticed. Yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah. But, you know, we got we got talking and, and Tom wasn't in the room, right? So we got, we got talking um, and... Uh, and and that was that was fine, lovely fella. Um, and then uh, we were there to watch. Um, I was at the house to watch, for some reason, the Counter Strike Go finals was being streamed, like one of the final matches. I think some Australians are in the finals, and I've got a lot of like YouTuber gamer friends. Um, and uh, and I go over and I'm and I'm sitting on the couch, and then uh, Tom comes out and sits down on the couch um, uh, with me. And then Tom's boyfriend comes and sits, and it, so then it's just me and two gay fellas on the yeah. couch. Yeah. Uh, and and there's nothing wrong with that. No. And that was and it was great. I was I, I used to play Counter Strike, so I actually knew what was going on. So I was really enjoying, and I I got sucked in. And on my left side was uh, was two other boys that I knew, and then on my right side was just two gay fellas. And then I'm watching the 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 match, and I get completely sucked in. And then I and then I just hear this this fucking annoying noise on my right, like this fucking ticking, like like that. And then I and then I just fucking I go, I just it's really putting me off, and it's a really tense moment. And I just fucking look, and I go, what the fuck's that? And anyway, they're kissing, and I just gave them the foulest. <laughs> <laughs> I gave them the foulest look. No, they weren't kissing. It was it was uh, the the boyfriend I hadn't met was just kissing his. My oh. mate's hands, like real cute shit. Yeah. But the noise, I was like, what the fuck's that noise? And I look over with confusion and, and, and annoyance and I make eye contact with this dude kissing my mate. Oh. And I was like, ah, it's the noise. <laughs> it's not the fucking. Um, so anyway, that was, that was my first gay mate experience. And I've come out, I've come out and I've learned a lot. Uh, I've learned that uh, that my mate has a boyfriend, and uh, and that and and he's really nice fella. Mm. Yeah, that's good. 
and uh, and and he learned that I was really enthusiastic about meeting him, <laughs> but I which was which was like kind of great, but a bit strange how enthusiastic I was. And then he learned that that I fucking hate kissing. <laughs> But you know what? That's better than most of you fucking bigots who were just like, oh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with being gay, but you've never had your, your, your gay mate experience ever. Mm. You know, come, you call yourself an ally. Come back when you're sitting on the couch with two fellas having a little bit of kissing and you're not involved with it. You're there platonically, they're there romantically. Then, then come back and call, say you're an ally. Mm. This is the most, I reckon this might be, this is episode 298, almost 300 episodes. And I reckon that's the straightest, widest thing I've ever talked about. It's like, man, huge thing happened the other day. I was in the presence of queers. <laughs> Four more weeks till episode 300. Four more weeks. That's <laughs> supposed to be two. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really sick at the moment, guys. Um, I uh, am... I'm just I'm just doing what I can. You guys know that I uh, I'm gonna do a Patreon episode right now with Keel, and we're gonna get into the start kick off the book club and the movie club. We're gonna talk about a bunch of other stuff as well. Um, but man, what a gay week I've had! You know, performing with drag queens and hanging out with two gay fellas, uh, and then buying a trink pink tracksuit, a trink pack suit. Um, anyway, guys, uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a you have a shit one, uh, and I'm gonna talk to you on Patreon right now. Bye. <laughs>